eradicate the coca crops. It was interesting that we learned by the governor's authority in Putumayjo that over 80% of what was destroyed, of what was destroyed was not the illicit coca crop. Uh, what the governor's authority reported, uh, over close to 80% of what was destroyed were people's food crops uh, by this aerial fumigation, this U.S. taxpayer-funded initiative for the drug war. And this community of farmers gathered there to meet with us to talk about what had happened. They showed us their fields that were decimated. We met with their children who were covered with skin-eating lesions, lesions, rashes that were caused by the chemicals. You see, the children were playing in the fields when the poison rained down. We met with members of their community who were elderly, who were dealing with significant respiratory ailments because of the fumigation. The local doctors we had met with all said that everything that was happening to the food crops, to the children, to the elderly, was because of this chemical produced by Monsanto that U.S. taxpayers paid to be rained down on Colombia. And what was amazing is that this group of people could tell us about the fumigation, but they couldn't dare speak why, as we drove into town that day, we saw on the sides of buildings, spray painted in red, the town of El Tigre will be destroyed. They wouldn't dare speak. They wouldn't dare speak of why the signs read as they did. You see, in Colombia, in this region of Putamayjo, the people live under something that they call la ley de silencio, or the law of silence. In other words, if you speak about the human rights abuses, if you speak about the massacres, there's a very high likelihood that you will be executed by one of the armed actors in the region, either the right-wing paramilitaries, the left-wing guerrillas, or the Colombian military itself. They're very careful what they say. And they could speak about the fumigation. We can meet with the children, with the elderly. We could see the crops. Because both the right-wing paramilitaries and the left-wing guerrillas had decried the fumigation as immoral and wrongful. So we asked the paramilitaries who controlled the town for permission to leave. We boarded our bus. And we left. <coughs> About two miles outside the town, we met in an abandoned church with the parish priest. And there in this abandoned church, the parish priest gathered with us and spoke the unspeakable. He told us why the signs read as they did. He told us what had happened in the town of El Tigre two years before we had arrived. You see, this entire region was controlled five years ago by the left wing by the left wing guerrillas, by the FARC. And <clears throat> the Colombian military for more than a decade had attempted to retake many towns, many cities in the region without much effect. The Colombian military, working hand in hand with the right wing paramilitaries, developed a campaign to start and take back towns in the south of Colombia. And one of the first towns the right-wing paramilitaries <coughs> targeted was the town of El Tigre. And they had decided that they would make an example of the town of El Tigre. They went into this town, riding Colombian military vehicles. The paramilitary forces were dropped off, and right away, they took into custody 34 campesinos, which they brought to the riverside. They cut them from their necks down to their stomachs, spread them using machetes, throwing their bodies into the river. For the three days that followed, the bodies would wash ashore, the children finding the bodies, calling the river El Rio de Sangre, Blood River. Before the paramilitaries left that day, in that act of taking over the town, 
targeting, making an example of El Tigre. They took 11 more campesinos, 11 more workers out into the jungle where they were never seen again. They were disappeared. And the parish priest told us that for some of the families, the not knowing is worse. Most likely they were executed, but somehow not knowing makes it more difficult. We were outraged. We asked, wasn't the Colombian military supposed to be on regular patrols of this area? Where were they when this happened? And the parish priest answered, they were there. The one road that goes in and out of the town of El Tigre, the Colombian military had blocked off so that no one could flee, could flee the town while that act of terrorism was taking place that day. Who was in charge of this Colombian battalion that had blocked off the town? Graduates of the U.S. Army School of the Americas, trained with our tax dollars here in our own country at Fort Benning, Georgia. Why would such an act of terror take place? Why would U.S. military training and U.S. military aid be connected with such ferocious atrocities? Perhaps some of the answer lies in the pipeline. It's no coincidence that right now, every, out of every 10 union organizers who are killed in the world right now, six of those union organizers are killed in Colombia. How does that relate back to the School of the Americas? Well, according to a recent Pentagon report to Congress, the purpose of the U.S. Army School of the Americas is to promote free market democracies in the region. To promote free market democracies in the region. Part of the mission of U.S. Southern Command, uh, which the SOA, the School of the Americas, is under, notes um, the purpose uh, of these uh, of, of, of military policy in the region of Latin America is to protect the strategic supply of natural resources and maintain access to the markets. What does that mean? What does that translate into? We certainly know that natural resources are oil or water or natural gas. We also know that maintaining access to the markets means maintaining access to labor. How does that translate into the training that took place at the U.S. Army School of the Americas? Well, in 1996, we were able to force the Pentagon, force the Pentagon to release training manuals actually used at the U.S. military training camp, School of the Americas. These training manuals these training manuals noted that such tactics as interrogation, psychological warfare, torture, execution should be used on church leaders, human rights advocates, student groups, and union organizers. In fact, these tactics that these soldiers were trained in should be used on those, open quotes, who do union organizing or recruiting. These tactics should be used on those open quotes who show sympathy with union organizing or strikes. These tactics should be used on those open quotes who make accusations that the government has failed to meet the basic needs of the people. In Colombia, where six out of every 10 union organizers in the world are killed, six of those union organizers are killed in Colombia, what does that military training translate into? 11 striking banana workers dragged into a cave, their throats slit. Six striking workers abducted and executed in Colombia. Union organizer in Colombia, Maria Gomez, assassinated, who was responsible for each, each of these atrocities. Graduates of the U.S. Army School of the Americas trained with our tax dollars. Our delegation that went to Columbia immediately returned to the United States where we stood at the gates of Fort Benning in community organized a vigil calling for the school of terror.